We need to speak about the fact that the prevent policy is a racist policy and people should reject it. Things that we know are blatant racism, we should reject them. Things that we know that are direct attack on certain communities. People have to start voicing, voicing, be heard. Don't be scared to come out because if they're not scared to come and lay puppies out in the street, why should you be scared to come and march for your rights? They are laying wreaths for dead people. You are marching for the living and for the people who have tried to stand. I will always be a voice for the SARS because these people at Lekki, they started a revolution. They were brave enough to stand against their government, even in the darkness of being shot down. They stood tall. We need to challenge the education system because the representation that is there, that is there of our people and how the children are taught and what they're taught. We look at things like Bullingdon Boys and the Bullingdon Boys edition too, and the fact that all these children in the private school, they're being groomed into power. They're being groomed to sit at the, the top corporations, engineering and, all, and computers and all. They're in charge of some of the, the very important things that are going to take us through to the next generation. And who are they? What do we know about them? We know that their parents and their and and them might hold radical views against our, our people. I could prove that with the fact that the rowing club in Oxford University poured wine over George Floyd's picture and called him Pink Floyd. Those are people in a private school that will most likely be CEO to companies, have big have big positions, and dis and power in decision making. I don't really rely on statistics of that those have been used against our people for so long. So I don't rely on those. I rely on lived experiences and as I'm boots on the ground and I communicate with my community and I have that relationship in my community that I go and I listen to the people that are living through the struggles to understand and form an understanding of where their struggle began and what they feel is a contribution to that struggle, whether it be in the, the system of white supremacy or whether it be in lack of opportunity to job austerity in their community their education system whatever that concern might be i go and i listen to the people so there's people that have come to me with problems immigration problems there's people that's come to me that's been members of the windrush generation and children of members of the windrush generation there's people that's come to me from palestine there's people from west papua there's people from nigeria Angolia, Congo, there's Uganda tonight. So there's people coming to me from all over the world. So it's not, my, my issue isn't basically just dealing with Britain on its own. It's dealing with oppression overall for black people and African people. So when I come out and I say these things, it's not because I've read it in a book and it's told me that this exists, it's because I've heard it from the people. Black history is what built this empire. Britain didn't, Britain didn't Britain didn't go to our countries laughing, smiling and knocking on our doors. They went there, they raped, they stole and they pillaged. And that is what mm -hmm. created this empire. That is the empire created on our ancestors' blood, sweat and tears. And it continues to thrive on our ancestors' blood, sweat and tears. When they when they come out, out of Africa and stop chucking sanctions in our countries, when our countries refuse to bend at the, the will of the West, then we can say that Africa is truly free. Until they stop stealing resources, Sources. And then when people come to this country just to have a peaceful life or to have access to infrastructures they wouldn't have access to, such as social welfare, free medical care in, in their countries because we've created poverty in theirs, how dare us shun them and turn our backs and call them immigrants coming to steal the jobs that Becky and Susie weren't exactly applying for sat on their sofa? How dare they create right. policies <laughs> such as prevent policies that are racist policies and then ask a youth clubs to accept funding based on teaching this policy and, and implementing this policy when knowing this policy targets a marginalized group of people. How dare them think that we're that stupid, that we believe British values is something that is actually supposed to be positive. Where's Britain got its values from? It's taken its values from everywhere around the world. When it invited my, my people here, it said we were coming to the motherland. It said we came here not as immigrants and that is what they need to educate. That is why decolonizing the education system is so important we didn't come into this country as immigrants we came into this country with rights we came into this country as human beings came here to help them establish the very things that they depend on today the nhs and a safe society world war one and world war two was helped by black contributions from the commonwealth and they need to really count those contributions because they counted those boots and those boots are on the ground
But when it came to securing people's livelihood and their, their life after the war, they lost people's paperwork, they took people's passports, and people's children are sat in this country with no right to work or even create a, a, a standard of life for themselves. There's hardly an exhibition of democracy. We're having a government that keeps throwing restrictions on us with no real common sense behind it. You're having people write policies for getting where they come from and putting out laws for getting where they come from. What do they know about democracy? Look at Libya before. Look at, look at all the countries that we've ever traded arms with their country, traded arms with countries that were warring with their countries, the countries that we, we said that we were going to help to bring democracy to. Tony Blair should go to prison. He took British children to war. He took men and women from this country to war based on lies. And then he gets to step down, walk away, and Muslims have to continue to be Muslims and live with the, the stigma and the stereotype that has now been pinned on their community. And even when they say they're out of your country, they're still very much in control of your trade policies. They decide what what comes in what your import and export deals are they they decide how much you can really move around economically in the world we need to learn something people when I tell you we have to love each other, in order to come out of this, we have to love each other. We want the system to be decolonized, so we have to start decolonizing our own minds. When Brother Leo said, he repeated many of the things I said to you in Nutting Hill. And I'm telling you, that message is going. The waves are there, but you have to keep in tune. And what the next time I see all your faces is when we hold the House of Parliament as a contested space. I want all your black boots down because when I walk through them gates, they stand aside and watch as they kill your prophets. I've got the calling and I'm telling you, I feel it in my bones that there's a change coming. You just gotta stick with me in it. They can label me a terrorist, they can label me racist, but I'm not racist, I just love my black You can't be racist. You cannot be racist. I just love my blackness. And I'm gonna stand for my blackness. I've never been scared. So when you see them saying on Twitter, I have not got a Twitter account. I've never had a Twitter account. I'm a queen. And they're scared of the power that's coming out my mouth. But we're going to stand together. We're going to stand together. We're going to make these changes. Africa needs to come together united to declare that we want reparations together. That is what we want. We want that time to rebuild our community. We want to own things. We want to open our own museum so you have to give us back our belongings because they're stolen goods and we've come we're coming to claim it. We want our belongings back. That's just simply what it should be because there's not going to be not one white man that sits down. If you look at every time they've gone into the Middle East Iraq, Libya, anywhere, Bin Laden, Saddam, they've killed not only those men, but they've killed their children. So they made sure there's not even a seed to be born again to rise against them. So we, we need to stop being so turn the other cheek and forgiving. We need to realize that a change has to come. Everyone's come to the terms that it's going to cause, we need to unite to cause liberation. Everyone's come to the, t the time now that this is a revolution. This isn't about not one community on its own, but this, this structure impacts many communities. And I don't think we're at that stance anymore. I think in the black community, we're ready to uprise. And if you're with us, you're with us. If you're against us, get out of the way, basically. And that's just how it is now. For me, it's freedom or death. And that's the way I see it. I don't see myself sitting in this system much longer in the dynamics that it is now. And I advise anybody that wants to rise up and, and see it and can understand it for what it is to stand up and unite together because united we stand divided we'll fall not just free in the slogan of freedom not just have democracy in the slogan or multiculturalism in the slogan but it actually be an evident thing that they could have access to opportunities they could have they could walk around without feeling like they're harassed or discriminated they're not adultificated by people that is a kind of environment that i want to set 
because you just you just don't know we might go home and our grandchildren might come back to live here in years to come so we want overall change it shouldn't be just go go and let them continue we want overall change this whole structure has to change I love my black people. I love all of you. Black is evident. Black is powerful. You heard a black woman is a one woman to carry the Eve gene. She can make every race. Every race come from a black woman. We are mother nature. And I want my sisters out there, let that register with you before you understand and start responding to them chirping. Let the queenship resonate with you. I don't open my legs for just anything. I know exactly who I am. And that is why they can't silence me or stop me. It's because I know who I am. I know where I came from. I'm a direct descendant of a maroon. It's deep in my bone and it's deeper than the skin.